The Eighth Fire is an Aboriginal prophecy declaring that now is the time for people from all cultures to come together in peace to forge a new relationship. Well, with that spirit in mind, the CBC launches a compelling documentary series tomorrow also called The Eighth Fire. It explores what all Canadians need to do to make that new relationship with Aboriginal people a reality. Right now, a feature report from the host of the series, Wab Canoe. It's a story of a few young men from Winnipeg wrestling to turn their troubled past into a promising future. Let's get it cracking! This frozen prairie town Peg City. has given birth to Western Canada's hottest rap group. Let's go! John C., Brooklyn, and Charlie Feta. They call themselves Winnipeg's most. In a few short years, they've gained a lot of attention. It's crazy when you get a kid singing our stuff. It's like, I think that means more than the money to me. It's like, you know, I'm actually changing the way people think and changing the way, you know, and hitting people's hearts. They've been recording together and making albums since 2005. Now they're winning awards. Had a spread in McLean's magazine. They even opened their own store. We got the gear. We're going to get into our own jeans, all sorts of stuff. And are swarmed by fans. We were stopped at Calgary to hop on the next plane, and uh, two middle-aged white men, like in their, like, I would say early 50s, like, look at me and John C. And says, are you the most? It's like, my kids love you. He's like, I need a picture right now. Pull this aside, took a picture of me, and Billy were like, this is crazy. They're heroes in the Aboriginal community. Not bad for three guys who come from the inner city. And like one out of three Aboriginal kids, Brooklyn and John C. didn't finish high school. The north end of Winnipeg is basically uh, the lower end of Winnipeg. There's a lot of space for underachievers, so to speak. Aboriginal kids are twice as likely as non-Aboriginal kids to live below the poverty line. And they're five times more likely to get in trouble with the law. Gang membership is steadily increasing. I grew up where it was hard. Every turn was never easy for me. I went out and I did certain things to get myself nice clothes. You know what I mean? I clothed myself. There's a lot of influences out there. And, and, and when I was young, the influences out there was crime. It wasn't music. It wasn't this. It was crime. These streets in the inner city of Winnipeg are what influenced John C., one of the poorest neighborhoods with a high crime rate and a large Aboriginal population. I mean, this is kind of the strip that we, we chilled out as as kids. Like, I mean, these corners right here, 30 people bumper shining. The next corner, these corners. Uh, John C. walks us down the street he moved to when he was 11 years old. Back then, we, we kind of hung on to this area because we were poor and we couldn't really go to many places. Days here were spent on the street with other neighborhood kids. So this is your old stopping grounds? Yeah. I they watched really people drink, time, witnessed uh, fights. A favorite pastime was throwing snowballs at cars so they could get chased. <laughs> at night, his home wasn't much of a refuge. But I slept many nights in his basement on the floor with a sheet on, on literally cement, you know, and like I remember... How old I, were you? I must have been at least uh, 13, 14, around that, around that era. To me, it was pretty normal at, 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 at that age and a little bit younger. And then uh, I kind of I realized what we were living in. And, uh, you know, it, at the time I couldn't change it because I was young and my mom, my mom was going through the stuff she was going through. <clears throat> so where are we off to next? I'll take to where my friend got murdered and started a heat bag for all of us. These streets were John C.'s school of hard knocks. He learned to steal cars, 
As he got older, he graduated to the gangster life. That lifestyle would eventually take one of his closest friends. He begs legacy, starts in this house on floor here. In 2004, after a fight broke out at a house party here, John C.'s friend David Lajamodier was gunned down. It's hard to bury a friend, very hard to bury a friend that you've, that you've been with every day, all day, hanging out and doing all types of stupid stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah, and then, and then to wake up and hear that he's gone and, you know, that sinking feeling of never, knowing you're never going to see him again, you know? Like, I got him patted on my arm. The death of his friend pushed John C. into making music, a way for him to let off steam and escape the streets. So he started his own label, Heat Bag Records. But even that is tied to the thug life. The term heat bag is slang for a flagrant criminal. I'm a boy, that's who I am. I'm a Fast forward to their success today. But they can't shed the heat bag image. It's not clear they even want to. Brooklyn credits the music for his surviving the streets. If I didn't find music when I did, I'd be those two options, dead or in jail for life. But he can't break free from his old lifestyle. Earlier this year, we caught up with Brooklyn in his neighborhood bar. This is familiar territory. All these people we know in some way. A refuge from the stresses of his music career. This is where he grew up. Dar Mayor, as she got murdered. Jungle out here. As a kid, Brooklyn already was a budding rapper. And he was a star athlete on a championship baseball team at his local community center. Yeah, this used to be my rec center. But he says things changed when they tore it down. There's nothing in this area. It's, they're just pretty much forcing kids back into the streets. He's recognized as a celebrity and hero. But he's also haunted by his criminal past. In general, look, there's the bad guys right there, eh? Just watching. Watch, they'll come mess with us. They'll come mess with us for sure. What's your name, Chief? Prefontaine. Oh, yeah. Met you before too, right? Yeah, you've met me. As far as that goes, same old. It's never going to change. Never, no matter how good we do. Brooklyn's friend Brett is arrested on an outstanding warrant. That's not how you do That's all I do. That's all I do. He will be released two hours later. You guys you know ask about me every time you pull over I one of my friends. Everybody. Say, where's I Brooklyn, the drug dealer? Everybody. You asked my brother. He got pulled over by you, and you asked him, where's the drug dealer at? See that guy's driving my car? I yeah. stopped him, too. Yeah, he's a black guy, I guess so. Oh, my God. Okay. It's either Indians or black guys, then. That's Come on. It's like the same old shit. Like, you guys think we're up to us. Nope. I'm no we're, good, we're, you know? we're in the neighborhood. We're rolling around, and we come into contact with people. I make people. music now. That's well, all I'm I do. I'm glad to hear that. I change kids' lives, and I try to change my own <laughs> in this, you know? And I change kids', kids lives, too, yeah. in this neighborhood by being out here yeah. day and night, making contact, making sure people are safe. So it's not This the is the thing. delicate dance that Aboriginal yeah, youth and police show. often do on the city street. Yeah, that's continuous, man. Honestly, I'm so sick and tired of the stereotype. Every time you want my body proves who I am. But in this case, there's a fine line between stereotype and reality. Since that encounter between Brooklyn and the police officer, Brooklyn has been arrested for breaches of probation and assault charges. He is currently in jail awaiting his court date. Charlie Feta has just been released from prison for a parole violation. John C. wants to move past that lifestyle, even as a past drug charge hangs over his head. Part of moving on means coming to terms with the things in his family's background that led to him growing up in a broken home. John C.'s grandma was taken from her family and put in a government-sponsored residential school where she was raised without her parents. In turn, she left John C.'s mom when she was a child. John C. grew up with a mother who did not know how to parent him. We asked him to sit down with elders Stella Blackbird and Audrey Bone to help him understand his past. My parents were both uh, survivors of residential school. 
And I went to residential school, so I had a lot of things to deal with, a lot of issues, a lot of pain. Um, I never um, knew how it was to uh, to be parented in, in like in our traditional way because that was taken away from my parents and it was taken away from me also. Not knowing about uh, my Aboriginal culture is comes from my grandmother and my mom being in residential schooling and and the stuff that was going on there where they were they were they were forced to be ashamed of who they were you know what I mean yeah it's a long struggle but then you're well on your way there you're starting to think about it think about it yeah and act on it that's another thing the elders were talking to us about was was parenting like it, it, it was it was passed down for the first time, John C. is having the difficult conversations with his mom. I know you love me to death and everything, but you don't express it. You don't know how to, you know what I mean? But that comes from growing up, you know what I mean? And, and I mean, it comes from residential schooling, residential plague that went through everyone, you know what I mean? That brought everyone to that standstill. But standing still is something John C. doesn't do well. At times, he's moving forward, trying to be an upstanding citizen, showing up at Winnipeg's hip-hop radio station to drum up support for a charity concert he's playing. Other times, it looks like he might move backwards, but like the other members of his group, the street life could land him in jail too. You know, shout outs to my brother Brooklyn and Feder who aren't here, you know, and I mean... And that's the dilemma. It's the gangsta life that gives his music street cred, but at the same time, he wants to be a role model. I feel like my new goal is to find that peace, to find that happiness within myself, so people see, people can see that happiness and want it for themselves, like I seen with the elders yesterday, is that happiness that they have with themselves. Aboriginal youth face a similar sort of dilemma. Tremendous potential and opportunity on the one hand, difficult challenges and obstacles on the other. In a city with the largest per capita Aboriginal population on the continent, and in a part of the country where Aboriginal people are the workforce of tomorrow, the choice facing John C. will be confronted by thousands of other young natives. Making the story of these rappers one of Winnipeg's most urgent. Wab Canoe, CBC News, Winnipeg.